Hi guys, Big Twinkie here. Welcome to my second episode of Ghost Head 101, where I help you navigate the world of spiritual, supernatural, and phantasm fashion. Today I'm going to be going over four different items. I'm going to be going over the pistol belt, the elbow pads, the boots, and the chemical gloves that our beloved heroes wear in the Ghostbusters franchise. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the pistol belt. Now, you have all types of options. I have seen people wear everything from suspenders to medieval style belts in this fandom. Ghost heads love to get creative. I, I guess, uh, either I'm less creative or maybe more of a, uh, what's the word, I guess, purist. Because I go for the classic GB1 pistol belt, which is a replica of the M. 1936 pistol belt. They were light gray in Ghostbusters and khaki in Ghostbusters 2, uh, kind of like black almost. And they held all their different equipment, such as the belt gizmo and all the different key fobs, the radio, and um, attached uh, all the different gizmos they wore, like the ghost trap and uh, a good place to hang the rubber gloves and things like that. Um, they had attachments on all the different key fobs uh, where you could hang your neutrona wand and things like that ecto goggles etc um, so they had a bunch of different styles each different Ghostbuster kind of like had their different uh, own different style uh, certain Ghostbusters that were not uh, engaged in certain activities like for instance Winston I don't think he ever used a ghost trap in uh, combat with a ghost he only handled them like when he first walked in to get the job and was being taught uh, how to put them in the containment unit uh, so he never had the attachment on his belt where you could hang a trap that was really more reserved for Egon and Ray um, so I don't really have that on my belt um, not that I'm modeling my belt after any one specific Ghostbuster but I don't really even have the trap either uh, I did make one so in a future video I am going to show you how that can be done um, if especially if you live in the Philadelphia area that's a little teaser as to how that can be done. Um, but I'll show you my belt. Um, I use the original Style 1 belt. Um, it's khaki and it has the classic uh, little tooth and hook connection that uh, was used in the military. And it comes off pretty, pretty simply. Uh, I think the waist on this goes up to I want to say 50 inches. So that's pretty big, um, you know, so big guys will fit into this. Uh, this attachment that you see here is for the CB radio, uh, which I will save for a future video. And I have one of the classic key fobs. This you could probably find, this key fob you could find at any like um, police auxiliary or FDNY shop. Uh, they'll run you maybe anywhere between like six and ten bucks. And I have like my own key fob here. I can't honestly even tell you what this is for uh, or where it's from, but I thought it was cool, so I throw it on there. Sometimes what I do is I'll take my uh, belt hose that attaches to the uh, leg and I'll actually plug it into this. It's a good way to secure it and uh, it comes right off, so there's no permanent attachment to it. Um, I used to have the second uh, pistol belt which they wore in the second movie. Uh, it's much sturdier and I think it can be widened a lot more and it attaches with a clip like uh, how like Jansport backpacks do and things of that nature. Um, there are way more things that you can put on this belt but like I've said in previous videos you could drive yourself uh, broke uh, getting every single Ghostbuster thing that are out there. Um, so I uh, basically my best advice is to take it slow make everything yours don't go out there and get every single screen accurate representation of these things that you know you can uh, my first belt was not authentic uh, my first uh, pair of elbow pads which we're getting to next were just some black skater elbow pads that I got um, and even to this day uh, I'll transition over to the elbow pads now even to this day, I really don't know what elbow pads that they actually used. Uh, with all the resources online and just looking at them in the movie, I really I can't tell uh, what they were. Uh, unless I could actually talk to the prop designer, who I don't even know if he's still alive, uh, from GV1. 
Um, I, I really have no idea like what they used, but these on GB fans are really good, the gray ones. Um, they pretty much used the same ones uh, in all the films. Uh, in 2016, uh, they didn't go with these, they had uh, darker ones. So, it's really just the first and second ones. The only difference that I noticed from these and the ones you see in GB1 are on the inside of uh, where you slip it on. There's like a little black square and I know that some real hardcore fans will get some fabric and they will sew a black square on the inside. Scenes where you can particularly see that are where they are walking into 55 Central Park West and you can see like particularly on Egon and Ray that there is a black square there. Now I always thought that was just like a sweat pattern. I always thought that because they had been wearing the gear throughout their you know short career that the inside maybe just got a little sweaty uh, but I think it actually is something on the inside of the elbow pad. The elbow pads have two loops okay they have an inside loop that's very tight and they have an outside loop that's not so tight. Um, I guess for very you know thin people you know you could put it here and then for guys with the bigger arms or ladies you can put it through the bigger hoop. These are very um, comfortable, uh, very padded. Um, you can wear them on your knees too I suppose uh, but I don't uh, I don't really think that there's anything wrong with them. I've had them for a long time and they've lasted. You can wash them in the washing machine. Uh, I don't really recommend putting them in the dryer though. That's not a good idea. Uh, I did it once and there's a lot of fuzz on them and it's gonna make a mess in the dryer. So don't do that. Um, Let's move on to the boots. Of everything on this table, um, if you really want uh, to spend some dough, I suggest the boots. Because the boots have multi-purposes in your life. Uh, since I bought these, I have worn these probably the most out of anything in my entire Ghostbusters attire. Now, footwear is a necessary part of life. Um, unless you're Aquaman, I don't know. Uh, insert good joke there. Uh, so I have probably worn these to my job a whole bunch. I work in a factory, so these are required for my job. They've been beat up quite a lot. I also obviously wear them whenever I'm suited up in my flight suit. And sometimes I just wear them out because the weather is cold. Like right now, if there's snow on the ground, why not? These are these are great. Um, they're oil resistant. They got a great grip. Um, I don't have a brand new pair to show you because uh, they're expensive, obviously. Um, but to give you a little history, what the Ghostbusters wore in the movie um, is I'm about ninety something percent sure what they wore was Corcoran brand. Those are very expensive online. Those are going to cost you probably over 130 bucks, 140. What I bought is very, very similar to the look. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you what the Corcorans look like. Um, the Corcorans look like this. The main difference, and it's such a small one, the main difference between the Corcoran, if you could see the difference, is the toe. And it's this sewn part right here. The Corcoran does not have this sewn part. It's more smooth. Which to me is not that big of a deal. But it has the same pattern on the side of the boot. It has the same zip pattern. It has the two um, buttons here. It has the same uh, zipper pattern except in the Corcoran's uh, example. They had a silver zipper and I think in the second movie they had a brass zipper or copper. Um, it's one or the other. I might have those switched. Um, but it has the same number uh, of spots for tying it up right there with the lace. And it's the same height. Uh, I think these are 10 inch uh, also. I don't know where they measure it from but it's a 10 inch boot. And these were 
way cheaper. Uh, whereas the Corcoran, like I said, are probably going to cost you almost 140. I think I only paid like 80 or 90 bucks for these. So that's my ghost busting on a budget tip. Um, you really can't buy boots of this quality for any brand for less than that because these are durable. You know, these are para jumper boots, which is the same type of boots the Ghostbusters wore anyway. So they're paramilitary. Guys who jump out of planes wear these. Um, you know, so they're going to be the quality uh, that you'd expect. Um, the last thing are the chemical gloves. I did not buy these. These were actually given to me when I joined my first franchise by uh, our president. Now these are not what they wore in the film. Um, it says, do not use for electrical work or fire, glove set, chemical protection, neoprene, pio pioneer style, N54, and there's like a whole bunch of like data on the bottom, all mostly in numbers. I'll show it to you. However, they look great. Um, in the film you can tell that they were wearing something else. Uh, but you can, you know, get your hand in there and actually do a lot with them. Um, they're not too restrictive. Of course, I've broken them in a bunch, uh, over the years. But, like, when I was walking in the, uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade in Boston, which, it was very cold, uh, I was wearing these gloves, which kept me warm, which is good. Um, as to what they wore in the movie... I don't know if there's any way to really find that out. Uh, please, shout out in the comments section for you big-brained ghost heads if you guys actually know the specific gloves or elbow pads that they wore. Uh, I know the belt and I know the boots, but I really, as far as these two items are concerned, I'm a little bit in the dark. I don't know exactly what they were. Um, these are probably replicas because I got these off of GB fans, and I'm somewhat somewhat sure that GB fans just made replicas from the movies for these. Um, these I just got uh, from somebody in my uh, franchise. He might have got them off of GB fans, um, but I can't be sure. Uh, I'd have to ask him. Um, so, I've given you at this point uh, everything you need to know about a flight suit, um, the belt, your elbow pads, and your boots. If we put that all together, um, you pretty much have everything you need. Because we went over, you know, obviously the name tag. I don't need to make a video about that. Your franchise patch is going to be if you're in a franchise, and it just goes where you want it. And then, obviously, your no ghost, because everybody's got to have a no ghost patch. N uh, enough said there. So you should be shaping up to look pretty good. Now, if I could put a number on what you should have spent by now, let's think about it. You can get the flight suit for somewhere between 40 and 60 bucks. You can get these for about eight bucks. You can get this for like six bucks, so that's 14. All right, still under 100. These, still under 100. Uh, so we're around the $80 mark. And if you buy these, uh, these are going to probably cost you another 80 so let's add some tax to that. Let's say we're under $200. So now, you look like a fucking Ghostbuster. Like, very authentic. The only thing that we really got to add to make you, like, 100% is probably the creme de la creme. The one thing that every Ghostbuster looks forward to handling, making, doing, you know, tricking out. And that's the Proton Pack. Okay? We will get to that soon. But before we do the proton pack, I'm just going to do some of the auxiliary items. I'm going to do like some of the things that can be attached to your belt. Because I don't, as a matter of fact, I strongly, strongly recommend that the proton pack comes very last. Because that's the most expensive part of your outfit. And people know a Ghostbuster. They know what a Ghostbuster looks like without a proton pack. So... Get the side stuff done first, okay? It's also very heavy, and there's a lot of places you can't go with it, okay? If you're on a group tour with your franchise and you want to go, like, into a historical building or you want to go through some narrow passages or up and down stairs, you're going to regret having that thing on you, man, I'm telling you. Plus, if you do have it on you and you're in, like, narrow areas or you're, like, you know, going into places that are a bunch of crowded areas with people and stuff like that, you might take some damage on that thing, and since you love it so much, again, you might regret 
taking it out so much. Of course you want to show off your new toy and it looks really cool and it probably sounds pretty cool and has like all the details from the movie, but trust me, the Proton Pack is not the end all be all, okay? So that's pretty much it for today. Uh, I think next time what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, the CB radio and I'm going to show you guys how I went about uh, arranging all the tools on my belt. Um, I have things that I keep on it all the time. I have some things that I put on it sometimes. Um, so I'll definitely go over like CB radio, I'll go over my ecto goggles because I have uh, the Mattel ecto goggles. Um, and I'll go over some things that I even don't have. Um, like again, uh, Mattel, like I said, made some toys like the PKE meter and things like that. So we can go over those even though I don't have them. Um, but they're they're very cool. They're very realistic. All right. So thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe in the section below, and especially about the things I asked you about, like these two items. Kind of not sure about these. Uh, what are they? Uh, what were they? I should say uh, back in 1984 when they made this, and what did they use? If anybody knows, shout it out. So uh, ring that bell if you want future uh, alerts to my videos. Uh, have a great new year, everybody. Okay, and uh, that's about it. Thanks for stopping by. See you guys next time, and happy new year.